We most sincerely welcome you to today's episode of Tax Matters. My name is Olumu Iwa Matuluko. Once again, we wish all Nigerians happy 51st Independence Anniversary. We thank God Almighty for His mercies. Last episode, we informed you that the Joint Task Board is 50, yes, 50, having been established by virtue of the Income Tax Management Act of 1961. We also told you that as part of the activities to mark that Golden Jubilee, the second International Task Conference will be held in Abuja for two days, Thursday the 6th and Friday the 7th of October 2011. Today on Tax Matters, we have an update on the activities, the achievements of the Joint Task Board over the last 50 years, as well as information tips on that second International Task Conference being held to mark the Golden Jubilee. But before then, we want to fill you in on events and happenings in the world of taxation in Nigeria in the last one week. First, the immediate past president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, who is also the current president of the West African Union of Tax Institutes, Wauti, Prince Raza Kunle Kodri, turned 50 on Tuesday, the 27th of September, 2011. I think it's a period for 50-50-50. As part of the activities to mark that birthday, a lecture was held, and the lecture presenter, the paper presenter, was the only professor of transition that we know, correct us if we are wrong, Professor M.T. Abdurazak, who at one time was also the chief executive and registrar of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. The topic of the lecture, wait for it, tax evasion, divination, and corporate insanity. Corporate insanity, divination, one of these days we will bring you excerpts from that paper. Suffice it at this point to say, Prince Quadri, happy birthday. <music> Moving on to the big story. History was made on Tuesday, the 29th of September 2011, in Abuja, when the Federal Inland Revenue Service and the Nigerian Postal Service, NIPOST, formally presented to the public a set of three commemorative postage stamps in furtherance of the communication objectives of the FIRS towards enthroning voluntary tax compliance. Chief David Ajibola Oloruleke, a past chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service and a current member of the FIRS board, stood in for the executive chairman, Mrs. Sifeko Moguyo Okauru. Ordinarily, you will want to wonder what has Federal Inland Revenue got to do with postage stamps? But the FIRS is uniquely connected with everybody that is willing to help this organization to propagate taxation throughout the, the country. In the process of doing this, we are very much open to everybody that can assist FRS in the propagation of what we do as tax collectors. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister for the Economy, Dr. Mrs. Okonjo Iwela, was represented at the launching by the Minister of State for Finance, Dr. Yerima Lawan Ngama. In the name of Allah, the beneficial, the merciful, I hereby unveil the commemorative stamp heralding the cooperation between Federal Inland Revenue Service and Nigerian Postal Services in indicating our populace about the virtues of paying taxes. <laughs> Nigeria tax extends a nation for infrastructural facilities and social amenities pay your taxes. Nigeria, be patriotic, pay your tax. Three members of staff of the Corporate Communications Department of the FRS were honored at the occasion for their roles as initiators of the idea to use stamps as communication tools. To drive home the message and entertain guests, some members of staff of the Corporate Communications Department put up a drama performance. To further place the release of the commemorative stamps in perspective, Tax Matters spoke to top management staff of the service who were in attendance at the launching. As part of the campaign 
public awareness Inland Revenue has embarked upon to make people realize how important taxpaying is to the uh, nation. I'm sure the stamps will remind people using those stamps on the need to pay tax. Basically it's to keep the public and the stamp using public particularly educated about the purpose of taxation and especially to tell them everyone who uses the particular postage stamps that tax is for development. If you notice the three denominations each has a message all bordering on development and that is what tax is used for. Now you need to understand the background of taxation. Every adult that earns an income you know, is supposed to pay tax. Forms part of the taxable population within the country. Okay, there can be as varied in, in form or nature as the entire population of Nigeria, for instance. So wherever these individuals are in the nooks and cranny of this country, it is the responsibility of Federal Inland Revenue Service to reach out to these people with effective communication that will aid them to understand, first of all, their need to pay tax, why they need to pay tax, what type of tax they need to pay, and how they need to pay this taxation. So from that broad perspective, you find that, that any form of communication or any form of idea that enables us to interface or engage with any member of this public is well welcomed. Taking for example on the average that we have, um, if we have up to 60% literacy rate in this country, people who are literate who can read and write, it's expected that at one point in time or the other, you are involved in some form of communication that will involve either posting or receiving of letter. Apart from also the normal need for you to communicate using letter writing, there is also the regulatory requirement that for documents, stamps have to be appended to them as part of the regulatory requirement. Malam Ibrahim M. Baba is the Postmaster General of NIPOST. What informed uh, your decision to collaborate with the FRS on this project? The, the Nigerian Postal Service has the responsibility of producing stamps. And the stamps are produced to depict historical events, culture of the people. And at the same time, it's supposed to be passing very important messages to individuals and to organizations. Uh, we have done stamps on a very on a very important event. Tax is an important thing in this country. And just like you saw in the drama that was put in place, there are this kind of ignorance. So an ignorant person is actually a blind person. But if you are educated, you'll be able to understand what the importance of this. And being an agency of government, we do realize that we have to collaborate in every, with every agency, not only Federal Inland Revenue Service. But in this case, in this particular case, we recognize the fact that we needed to partner with them to be able to educate Nigerians on why we should pay taxes. And that is why we're having those three denominations. And those three denominations are depicting different concepts and different uh, messages that are so important that when that is captured in the minds of people, it will go a long way in people evading this uh, tax payment. And from the initiators, how did this concept germinate in your minds and, and that of your colleagues? First of all, I will say it is glory to God, because God is the source of all ideas. As at that point in time, we were faced with a challenge of doing something new. We were faced with an obvious task of doing the communication now differently from the traditional media. Most of when I think, we always do newspaper adverts, we do all those kind of things. And I was telling myself, can't we do it in a different but subtle manner? That will be something that will even help us to link up with our other agencies of government that will see us as friends. So, on a certain day, I was just... I can't remember where I was precisely, and the word postage stamp just came up, and, and before I could say Jack, 
the pictures and I remember of course when we went to make preliminary investigations findings in Naples they said this is something they do with organization that they are willing and like they said the rest is now history but one thing I must say here once the idea got across to the executive chairman I must give it to her she saw she saw the sense in it and she gave her support. You are a member of the Tax Matters family, uh, being a sign language consultant. And so we want to ask you, when did this, this idea start? The, I, the concept was um, initiated about three to four years ago. Let's say between three to four years ago. And um, it started with, um, we were really four. One of us is late now. Um, we came together to say, how can we improve tax compliance? How can we carry tax education? Because that was when the reform was still at the implementation stage. And um, with the reform going on, how will people know that they need to pay their taxes? They need to know about this reform. And um, we came up with different ideas on what we can do. We we'll put them down, we we'll bring another one, and the concept of using the stamp came up. And the concept came up because we, we agreed to it because we said ta, um, stamp is an object that travels to different parts of the world with no border, no custom duty. Postage stamp is a national material, is a national security document that everybody undo. So that was how we come about using postage stamp as a means of educating taxpayers. Was the idea immediately embraced by management or did you have any challenges along the way? There are a lot of challenges, but we thank God and we thank our executive chairman, Ifeko Omogu Yokaru, for her support because she's a leader that supports innovation, that supports creativity and hard work. So with the support of the management and the board, what we are doing today is now a reality. Welcome back still on happenings in and around the world of taxation. On Friday, the 30th of September 2011, the Field Operations, Processes and Programs Department of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FOPP for short, organized a workshop in Ikeja, Lagos, for senior cadre staff of the FRS serving in the Lagos Island and the Lagos mainland regions on the administration of capital gains tax, stamp duties, and personal income tax for optimum revenue yield. That is a story for another day as we want to quickly move on to fill you in on activities marking the Golden Jubilee of the Joint Task Board, especially the Second International Task Conference, which will hold for two days, Thursday the 6th and Friday the 7th of October 2011. Tax Matters spoke with the Executive Chairman of the Federal Revenue Service, who is also the Chairman of the Joint Task Board, Mrs. Sefeko Mogui Okauru. To celebrate its 50th anniversary, the Joint Tax Board, under the chairmanship of Ifo Eko Omagui Okaru, is organizing the second international tax conference theme, Taxation and Good Governance, a recipe for sustainable growth. The conference we hold at the Trust Cup Hilton Hotel, Abuja, from Thursday 6th to Friday 7th of October 2011. Topics include the challenges of tax administration in a monolithic economy, multiplicity of taxes as the bane of tax compliance and yield, Special guest of honor, His Excellency Dr. Gulag Ebela Jonathan, President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Be there. Joint Tax Board, creating a tax friendly environment. ML Abubakar, Secretary Announcer. We understand that the Joint Tax Board is 50, and uh, you are the Executive Chairman of the Federal Revenue Service as well as the Chairman of the JTB. What is your role in the JTB? Thank you very much. I think first of all is to understand the role or the relationship between the Federal Inland Revenue Service and the Joint Tax Board and also how the Joint Tax Board got to be created. First of all, the JTP is 51 because the Income Tax Management Act 1961, which gave birth to the JTB, came forth in 1961 after the Resman Commission that looked at problems of multiple taxation across the three regions of the country, the West, the East, and the North. As a result of that commission, it was agreed that clearly to avoid multiple taxation, 
it was important to, for the Personal Income Tax Act to be enacted as a federal act, as opposed to what was obtained prior to that time as regional acts, for better harmonization, better coordination, and ultimately, at the end of the day, enhancing the competitiveness of the country. As a consequence, the Income Tax Management Act was, was therefore promulgated. And to, but because it was also recognized that prior to the enactment of this act, the regions were administering their own tax laws. It was important to still recognize their role in the administration of the tax laws, the Personal Income Tax Act as we know it, by creating a joint tax board made up of the federal Inland Revenue Service, which acts as, you could say, the supervising authority, since it's a federal tax law, over the administration of the federal taxes, but recognizing the fact that it's a combined administration of federal and states. So the JTB was created with the chairmanship, always acceded to the chairman of the FIS to provide that direction, and then made up of representatives of the states to ensure that the administration of the Personal Income Tax Act, though a federal law, but delegated to the states to administer and keep the revenues collected, were done in a harmonized and in a very standard way. So that way you achieve the dual purpose of eliminating multiple taxation and yet giving the sense to the states that they could collect their own taxes and keep it, but ensuring that there was harmony in the administration of the Act. So as chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, that's the role I play, to work with the federal and the state tax authorities, ensuring harmony in the administration of the Personal Income Tax Act, ensuring standards are uniform across board, ensuring that the revenue boards align with each other, ensuring that there are standards across board. So you move from one state to the other and you almost feel that you are basically in the same country. And you don't feel a sense that there are different standards applying to different states. Uh, we'll come back to the issue of the mandate and how the JTB has been able to achieve the, that mandate. Okay. But we understand that over the years, some other organizations have come on board, apart from the State Board of Income and Revenue, Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission, okay. Federal Road Safety Commission, the FCT, where you admit FRS administers uh, personal income tax, but the FCT is on the joint transport. And uh, a few other organizations in recent years, like immigration. the immigration department. Yes. And, yes. Um, and the reason being that we felt that even though we're administering taxes, we needed to co co co-opt and work with other agencies of government that played complementary roles, the roles that we played. So take the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission. We felt that there will be, in the course of administering our taxes, issues that will be of relevance to the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission, and vice versa, in playing their own role, issues that will be relevant to us. And so we invited them as you know, a co-opted member. Immigration, the same thing. Access to records, access to individuals coming into the country. Again, we invited them as a member. Road safety, the same thing. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that even though the Joint Tax Board is primarily set up for personal income tax administration as well as other taxes, because sometimes people forget that part, mm -hmm. other taxes on individuals, by virtue of the Taxes and Levies Act, the road taxes defined as collectible by the state government, any tax relating to those moving on the roads, uh, we, 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 we found akin to that with our charges for driver's license, charges for number plates, were also, in a sense, you know, um, collectible by the state. And since the Federal Road Safety Commission superintended over the quality of the number plates, the production of the number plates, usually you find meetings after meetings, and that's a, a source of revenue uh, for the state uh, tax authorities that it was important that we also co opt them into the meeting. So basically it was to widen the scope, ensure collaboration. In the case of FCT, um, again, the reason for inviting FCT was, it was recognizing the gap between FRS as a revenue board for the FCT and the FCT itself as a territory 
and hoping that with the JTB, that gap will be closed. Um, whether that has been achieved, of course, is left uh, to, to all of us to administer, but I think clearly there's still a lot of room for improvement in the FCT recognizing that FRS is a revenue board for the FCT. But basically that was the reason for inviting FCT to be part of it. So that way, um, beyond the day-to-day -day relationship FRS will have with the FCT, FCT will better understand what we do at the JTB and enhance collaboration between the two um, bodies. We understand that as part of the celebration, we are having an international tax conference. Why an international tax conference? Well, we, we thought about it at the JTB that, I mean, uh, where tax, uh, where tax authorities, what's the best way to celebrate who we are? And the, and the best way is to, you know, create some intellectual space where we really discuss the issues, look at where we are coming from, so that way it helps us in determining where we should be going uh, post-50 um, in, a, in a manner that engages all engages the public, engages the academia, and in a manner that recognizes that Nigeria is not an island, and anything we do, we need to recognize that we're operating within the global space. And so, not just a tax conference, we felt an international tax conference bringing in together speakers from Nigeria, speakers from outside Nigeria, multilateral organizations that have worked with the tax authorities to be represented in that group, discussions that cut across the legislature the executive, to, to really look at issues and let us come up with a real critical analysis of where the tax system is today. Because you really don't have any other body other than the JTB that pulls together all tax authorities to really think about the tax system and help determine where do we go from here. And that's why we have the International Tax Conference. For us, symbolic, a 50-year anniversary, but also planning post-50 where do we go from here? Okay. Uh, when is it holding? It's holding October, specifically 6th and 7th, but a registration starts on the 5th, so October 5th to 7th. To celebrate its 50th anniversary, the Joint Tax Board, under the chairmanship of Ifueko Omagui Okaru, is organizing the second international tax conference theme, Taxation and Good Governance, a recipe for sustainable growth. The conference we hold at the Transcorp Hilton Hotel, Abuja, from Thursday 6th to Friday 7th of October 2011. Topics include the challenges of tax administration in a monolithic economy, multiplicity of taxes as the bane of tax compliance and yield, special guest of honor, His Excellency Dr. Gulak Ebela Jonathan, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Be there. Joint Tax Board, creating a tax-friendly environment. M.L. Abubakar, Secretary, Announcer. There you are. If you have an invitation to that conference and you are not there yet, it is time to go. Registration began on Wednesday, the 5th of October, and the main event is Thursday and Friday. By the way, on Thursday night, a gala night to mark JTB at 50 and to showcase Nigeria's culture to our visitors will be held. If you are not invited or if you cannot make it, be sure that on this program we will serve you details in subsequent episodes. I want to thank you most sincerely for watching. See you at the conference. <laughs>